What's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting and also uh, the Spooky Forest. So this is where we were in our last video uh, and as I mentioned this is also where an old school sat. Basically I presume the school sat here. Now in my last video I mentioned that I could not find or I hadn't been able to find uh, and locate a picture of the old school. Well guess what I have. Here it is now. I'll throw it up on the, uh, the screen and as you can see it's, uh, I've only got the one picture. Uh, of the school and then the second second picture that I'll throw up uh, is of some of the school kids so very black and white grainy images I know however uh, can you just imagine that school building sitting right here and this is the corner of the allotment so pretty much right here as you can see we've got the road uh, and right where my finger is is pretty much the boundary line uh, now that runs all the way to the corner uh, and back there you can see where that tree line ends uh, and it runs Way down there, uh, it's a big site, it's a four and a half acre school site. So, and what I was actually gonna do, I've got the book here, and as I mentioned, uh, I attended uh, not this school site, but the one uh, just over yonder. So basically uh, there was two schools in this area uh, due to the, uh, basically there was a big old swamp uh, river down there, and in early days they could not cross it during the winter months it was impassable uh, hence the need for a second school over here so as you can see we've got young dominic too he's going to play last kids on earth today i'm sure and uh, play with some sticks and what i was going to do is i was going to give you a read through some of the history so um, basically we'll, uh, we'll we'll pick a pick a book, uh, bit in the book and we'll start off and we'll share some more history uh, as we go throughout the day okay so first a little bit of history about this site um, basically states here in the book later in 1875 uh, a new site was finally recommended on allotment 12 uh, it has two advantages number one it is unselected crown land number two it will be available for the children 10 or 11 in number from the valley further south over the river a bridge now connects this locality with the part east of the river, hence the school will also be available for other children there. The site is at the northwest corner of allotment 12. Five acres should be reserved with a frontage of 10 chains to the main road, main road, uh, and a depth of 15 chains in. So uh, the land is uncleared. The sediment has all of the elements of permanency Building should be commenced at the earliest opportunity. So it goes on to state about the teacher, uh, the headmaster. Uh, he says, uh, he writes to the department, uh, the education department on the 11th of September. He writes, I intended to commence duty on Monday morning, uh, but will have to defer doing so until I have obtained some books, slates, writing panels, etc as notwithstanding that Mr. Burke informed me that I should find every requisite in the building. I find the bare walls only. I have made seats for about 12 children today of some rough slabs and if I can procure any books of cards or cards in the nearest town, sorry, a noisy car, I shall make a start on Wednesday morning. I have the honor to request that the furniture may be sent at once or if already sent, may be hurried on its way as quickly as possible. So there you have it. Uh, he was looking, the head teacher was looking to open up the school on the Monday morning. However, when he uh, got here, uh, un unknowing to his knowledge, uh, there was nothing here, nothing here to teach with, nothing here for even the students to sit on. So he cut a few trees out of, uh, cut a few chairs out of a few logs uh, for the students and wrote a letter uh, stating that they needed to hurry up with the rest of the stuff. So very interesting. I love learning uh, those sorts of pieces of history. So anyway, we are going to get the uh, detector out and we're going to make a start. And Dom's also going to be running the midi horde. So let's get going. Okay, we're in the spooky forest. Dom's got the midi horde, as I mentioned, a little shovel. I'm going to use the pick. And I've also got the little tiger, uh, basically coin popper. What I uh, intend to do, uh, being that there's 
there's going to be tree roots all through here. Uh, basically what I intend to do is use the pick and then basically uh, pop out the target uh, with the little coin popper here. So what I've just noticed too uh, is these bulbs. Now uh, bulbs are always a great indication uh, that there was occupation at a site uh, and especially school sites. Uh, they even, um, in some instances, uh, sometimes the headmaster of the school would actually apply for funding uh, or apply for a grant uh, to plant trees basically to uh, neaten and pretty up the school. And they even held competitions uh, back in the day. Uh, there would be um, basically um, uh, best school or best kept school or, uh, you know, uh, neatest school or best presented garden, uh, what have you. So there's some more there just behind Dominic's feet. So, yeah, look, great place to start. As I said, the old uh, golden elm tree at the back there, big old tree, and um, basically the bulbs in this area. So uh, I dare say this is where the school was. Right. Whew, it's cold in here. No sun. Uh, anyway, I presume the sort of school was here. A dom wandering over there. I sort of did a bit of a lap. I went whoop, to that tree, went around the tree eight times. No, probably two. And then come this way. Walk this way. Boom. Got one. This is what I wanted. I just wanted to find a penny just so I knew that I was on the money. Uh, I knew that I was right in saying that the school was up this end, uh, being such a large block. And look, I could be wrong. Um, however, it did say it was at the top northwest corner of the allotment, and that's where it shows it being on the block. However, the allotment, I mean, on the map. However, I don't exactly know where they built the school, whether it was up the top also, or uh, further back in there. As I said, it was a big, big block, four and a half acre uh, block this, so the school wouldn't have been very big. So, in saying that, uh, I wonder where it was. All right, we're gonna have to work this one out. He did come in at a 20 um, So I do believe it's going to be a Britannia penny uh, Which should date it perfectly to this site. However, we're going to have to give him a bit of a clean up and come back because I can't see anything Righto, so there you have it 1907 perfect perfect dates this site perfectly as I said and uh, Nice to have found it, considering, you know, like they would have ripped up all this ground when they put the plantation in. Uh, so it's nice uh, that this one's still here. I'm just hoping that uh, we can come across a few more and they're not damaged. So, or they're not buried too deep. Look at him go. Go, Dominic. Hey. Low and slow, low and slow. You're swinging like a wild cat. You know, I was actually gonna drive in here um, and park up, you know, somewhere here. And look, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that hard. However, in my past, I've done a lot of full driving. Uh, actually ran a full drive local club uh, there for a while. Um, and every day of the week, I'd go to work and work on full drives, uh, installing winches, uh, bash plates, solar power, um, panels, roof racks, you name it, uh, we, we did everything. Uh, we put new motors, gearboxes, bigger wheels, lift kits, we did everything. And look, uh, with that experience, I told myself today, I will not be driving in this pine forest. Uh, because if there's anything uh, you should keep in mind about these pine forests is 12 months of the year, they don't really get sunlight. And... You know, down here, six months of the year, we get pretty heavy rainfall. So, a site like this, you know, even if I drove up in them paddocks right now, it would be wet, and chances are I could get bogged. But I can guarantee you, if I drove in here, that thing weighs three, three, three tonne, a bit over three tonne. If I drove in here, I would sink, and I would be bogged. And as you can see, just how wet it is. I'm just digging this hole, and look at the water filling up. So, good, uh, good thing to remember, don't drive into pine forests unless you're set up with a winch and all the right gear, which I don't have a winch at the moment. Okay, so we've got another one here, uh, way down the back of the school too, fair way away from the car. Bit of a dodgy signal. Well, not if I turn that way. I 
reckon there's a coin. I reckon it's just going to be buried, buried very deep. So I'll give this top stuff a scrape off. I feel like I'm uh, out in the gold fields looking for gold now. Right, we'll uh, give him a scrape. Listen to those cockatoos. Unreal. They, uh, they got a big, big problem with cockatoos over there where all the farmers got their crops. And that's why every so often you'll hear the gunshots going off in the background. And they're not actually gunshots. They are uh, compressed air timed explosions. So uh, it's a way for the farmers to keep those cockatoos uh, away from their crops. So they're bloody loud explosions too. They shake the ground. Unbelievable. So really cool. I'll we'll find out what this is and we'll come back. Right, so here he is. We just used a little uh, coin popper to dig him out. I actually thought it was going to be a token, but no, it's part of the old uh, door surround plate. So there goes one of those gunshots. Do you hear that? Listen. There goes the next one. Timed explosions. First one goes off. It's really, really loud. And the secondary one goes off. A little bit quieter. So there you have it though. That's a, uh, a door lock plate surround. The door handle uh, would have went through the middle there. So that would have been mounted to the door and you would have twisted the door handle there. So that would be off the old school. And one of the schools actually here burnt down uh, at one stage. So, and then another one uh, nearly burnt down. It was only because of the uh, aid of the students at the time uh, help, helping fight the fire that it was saved. So uh, pretty cool. We'll, uh, we'll read a little bit more history uh, as we go. Okay, so while uh, Dom's playing with the fence there, I'm going to go through a little bit more of the history. So this is basically a letter and it was, da uh, it was dated 1901 and it was sent out to the Secretary of the Education Department, Victoria. And it was basically wrote by uh, the headmaster teacher at the time here. So he states that, uh, Sir, I have the honour to state that owing to the condition of the roof and windows of this building, it is impossible to carry on school duties to my satisfaction. The continued rain has fallen through the roof to the floors and dusts, floors and dust in several places. And although a good fire is kept up, the children suffer from draft and cold the draft from various openings causes the smoke and fire to blow out into the room and it is only with difficulty and with a certain amount of plight that a lie a live fire can be maintained i'm sorry uh this is what i'm reading uh, it's very very hard uh so to read um uh, that a fire can be maintained i would therefore urgently with your Request to do repairs without delay. So, basically stating that the, the, the building was falling into disrepair and uh, uh, basically unusable. Could you just imagine uh, being the headmaster here, the teacher, uh, coming to school uh, and basically trying to warm that building up for, you, for the school kids, keep the draft out, stop the leaks in the roof uh, and the windows, you know, and all the meantime, like here we are, we're in winter at the moment. We've got a pretty nice winter's day. Uh, but could you just imagine uh, a wild, wet, windy, gaily day out here? The roof leaking, um, the, the, the wind blowing, and you're trying to teach 20-odd uh, students while freezing your bum off. So very, very hard times, very hard times. And look, I will say um, uh, the teachers were only paid an annual fee of £80 here. So to come and work and, uh, and do that every day and, and toughen that out every day. And don't forget, it's not like when he finished school, he jumped in his car, put the air con on and drove home. He would have lived on site here. There would have been a, a, a teacher's master's residence built here. Uh, or he probably would have um, boarded or lodged somewhere nearby to here within a few miles. So he would have had to probably finish up the school, lock up, everything like that, see all the kids off um, and basically wander home or ride his horse home if he had a horse i mean that was that was a luxury so uh very very interesting times i love learning about it that's for sure but i nearly wasn't going to dig this one he was coming up very sketchy 
like all the targets here. I don't know why. Interference, I'd say. Anyway, we've got Commonwealth Half Penny. So he's going to be early 1900 something. Something. Oh, there he is, around that way. We're holding him upside down. 1911. There you go. Not too bad a condition either. I know it doesn't look like it, uh, but he will clean up pretty well. So very nice, very nice. That's our second penny now. So uh, I proved my theory right. We are on the school site. Like we're, we're in the right spot anyway. Don't exactly know where the school sat it's on such a large block. However, we are on the school site. There wouldn't be pennies here uh, if we weren't. So we're just going up and back, gridding this way, uh, trying to locate it. And I would like to get down in the back there, but as you can see, it's overgrown. It's hectic. So not worried about snakes or anything. I'm just worried about more me, uh, me coil and also uh, losing depth because it's pretty hard to swing through that, especially blackberries. Uh, you hit them and your coil gets caught in them like that. So we might just leave that for another day. Listen to this bloody perler. Oh yeah, this is what I've been going, looking for for the last hour. Listen to that. Could just be a can, Coke can. Oh. Chop, get out of there. Things hit me in the face. It's hard going in here. It's not the normal easy slog that I'm used to. Uh-oh, there's something in the hole. What's it gonna be? That? It's an old drinking cup. There you go though. Old drinking cup, kids probably used to use. So, some uh, interesting history too on this school. I uh, read there last night. Uh, there was there was a, a family of eight kids, and these eight kids uh, used to walk to school every day. Noisy, noisy birds. Anyway, these kids used to walk to school every day, and uh, they used to walk four k's to school. Now, I know four k's doesn't sound like much, but as a young child walking to school early in the morning, four kilometres through the grass and the wet and the puddles and crossing a stream uh, is quite dangerous, uh, and also quite a lot to undertake before going and sitting at school and trying to learn all day. And basically these kids uh, would rock up to school, if they'd rock up to school, uh, they didn't always get there some days and basically these kids would be so tired um, Getting to school they generally fall asleep during class now What the teacher wanted to do was uh, Basically the headmaster there is there's a letter written uh, to the government Education Department of Victoria basically asking uh, for uh, uh, I think it was four or five pound or ten pound uh, so they could buy these kids uh, a horse or a cow uh, to ride to school so that these kids weren't so tired by the time they got to school so anyway long story short uh, the money was granted and basically these kids uh, had uh, then a, a cow to ride to school they didn't get a horse, they got a cow. So can you imagine eight kids on the back of a cow? Probably not eight kids, probably more like four or five. And uh, some of them walked or what have you and took turns. But uh, very, very cool. And these kids would then be able to get to school and um, actually concentrate on learning and not fall asleep. So very cool. Another bit of rubbish. Check out this little guy. He's got some writing on him too, but I can't make it out just yet. Yeah, can't really, something and sun. Yeah, anyway, nice little button. And you just come out of that hole there, and you can see what's right beside it, or over the top of it, the excavator marks, the excavator tracks. Uh, you can see them there too, so from when they've been clearing a bit of trees. So uh, that's really nice to be able to save that little piece. I know it's only a button. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not a pendant, it's not a medallion. Um, however... That's a really cool piece. I can just imagine that may have fallen off the uh, one of the teacher's trousers or shirts or one of the kids. So very, very cool.
Very cool. Okay, so here's another really interesting one, and this is pretty much what I was just speaking about, uh, lodging or a residence, uh, a teacher's residence at the school. Basically, uh, the head teacher writes in a letter to the education department on the 30th of November, 1874. Uh, he writes on to say, a teacher's residence is very much needed for this school, uh, especially as there is no place on the on the school side of the swamp uh, at which an even an unmarried teacher could find a lodge except one place a sleeping apartment only two miles from the school with a dirty and very rough bush fare two uncomfortable easy chairs with both seats out altogether and everything else on a par for which i paid 18 shillings per week i have to do my own washing and mending here at this place and i can truthfully say that this is about the best side on the side on this side of the swamp. The only other available place for a teacher is four miles from the school by one route over a dread, dreadfully bad track from the schoolroom and not in winter time. It is impassable. By the other route, though only half the distance, the school cannot be possibly approached even in moderately wet weather, as the river or swamp is not fordable on horseback. Uh, the swamp being half a mile across ending in a stream 12 foot deep and 20 feet wide uh, the tree which completes the line of communication being frequently under water uh, and he goes on to say it rains here about eight months in the year and he's actually underlined the word eight months so uh, he's pretty pretty uh, insistent that it rains a lot here um, it also may be of interesting to note it goes on to say that according to the Government Gazette of 1875, uh, what we spoke about before, it says a head teacher's salary for a school of under 20 students uh, was £80 a year. Now this equated to a wage of about 30 shillings a week. Mr, uh, or the teacher here, was paying over half his weekly wage just in board. Uh, so, <laughs> pretty incredible. Uh, in another letter written at about the same time, he states... Uh, for with all my strict economy in personal living, I shall not have five pounds out of all my salary to take home to my family. Uh, I dwell in the most depressing solitude. I am like a tame wild beast sleeping under the schoolroom gallery and cooking for myself. Oh, the poor guy. The poor guy. I sort of feel sorry for him. Um, and later on, there was another teacher that uh, that come here. And he come in here, he come here in 1875. Uh, and it seems that he was quite happy uh, to board within the district and he expressly stated in a letter to the education department uh, he says that uh, there is at present scarcely any necessity uh, for the erecting of a teacher's residence here at all so one teacher was complaining uh, however he had been here for a few years already so and then the next teacher uh, he didn't seem to mind so mind you uh, he was only a newcomer so I wonder if he changed his thoughts uh, after a little while being here. Right, now this is a cool find. It was ringing up as a rusty item, uh, but also very high tone right beside him too. Uh, we've got an old tap. Beautiful, beautiful. And just imagine the kids uh, turning this on, or the teacher turning it on, as needed, uh, to supply the water. So, what a ripper. What a ripper piece. Absolutely love it. It's not just a tap either. It, it's, a, it's a tap that is linked into the history that I know of this school uh, and that's even more special so uh, it's not just a tap it's a special tap right we've got another good one here um, solid 18 oh jump to 17 then oh jump to 19 can only be it can only be a uh, half penny though I'd imagine oh that's a tree you can see why I'm using a pick today is uh, very very hard to get a shovel in and dig these sorts of sites so you just dig what you can and then uh, use your fingers or something like a screwdriver or a, like that little coin popper that I had before and uh, you can retrieve the coin retrieve the target like this don't think it's a coin at all doesn't look very coin shaped to me so chunk of lead Right, uh, we are going to uh, stop for some lunch now because uh, I'm hungry. What about you, Dom? Yeah, he's got a packet of peppermints that he just keeps eating. But uh, I explained to him uh, they're not food, they're lollies. So we need to go get some proper food into us. Oh, this is the one. 
sounds too good to be true. I've not had any good targets like this today. Hear that? Repetitive, short, sharp signal. That's gotta be a coin uh, or a pendant. We better be careful. <laughs> not go stabbing it in the ground like a wild man. There it is, I reckon. It's not a coin. Oh, I was gonna say it's a ring. No, okay, it's a um, it's a a tap handle, part of. Whoop! Keep dropping him. Not gonna be able to see him if I keep dropping him. So he's busted off. Gonna be busted off somewhere because he should have a handle. There he is. So that's where he's been busted off. So he would have a handle going down there. I have shown some of these in my videos before, and that square head would have went onto the tap and turned him. On and off. Bugger, bugger. Got so excited then. Anyway, uh, there's got to be a pendant here too. These early school sites, uh, all the kids were given uh, pendants after World War One to commemorate the end of World War One. Same thing uh, throughout World War Two. Same thing with uh, Queen's coronation, King's coronation, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, anniversary of uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth reign, all that sort of stuff, or Queen Victoria reign, I should say. Um, all that sort of stuff so look there's got to be one here somewhere because generally all the school sites that you hunt you find at least one um, they would be given to the school kids school kids would run around by the end of the day they'd probably lose them so that's what we're really aiming for here is a nice old pendant but we're going to go grab some lunch as I said first right so here's an interesting little find I've uh, got a few of these at home found a few in the past now it says Australia on it you can read once it focuses there, Australia, just, you can read. And basically what that is, that's a little lead bale seal. And basically a lead bale seal uh, is almost the, uh, in retrospect, almost like what uh, we know of uh, as being uh, like a tag on a bit of clothing now today. So a lead bale seal back in the day uh, would have basically stated um, where the goods were getting shipped from, where they were going to, uh, could even have a date on it. And basically, that little lead bale seal uh, would be stamped along the way during travel. So by the time it got to the end, uh, the person knowing and receiving the goods knew that it was uh, basically untampered uh, and, and, and received it. Um, basically, uh, otherwise, um, if the lead bale seal was tampered with or it wasn't there, um, basically, uh, they might reject it. They might reject the goods. So pretty interesting, pretty cool little piece to find. So very cool. Righto, see the car? Or the back end of the car? We are way up the back here. Uh, and almost imagine the picture I showed at the start of the video. This is probably where the kids were standing along the back fence. You see the big old pine tree here? <coughs> Excuse me. This is a big old pine tree there. And uh, basically, a few blackwoods and what have you, they're not too old. Uh, this big old gum tree here, he looks pretty old. And then following through to those big gums that sort of run up along the fence line there. They're all old. And I'm getting a lot of targets in here, uh, right at the back. I've gone gone bush, and I'm just making my way through the blackberries very carefully. But I am getting a lot of targets up here. So I'm wondering whether the school is up the back here. I don't know. I don't know. It's all questionable, isn't it? Um, but I, I just looked and I thought, if the school was at the back here, just imagine those kids would have been standing just there along the fence line. So I'm pretty much walking in their footsteps. Okay, so here's a really nice piece, and uh, this is exactly what uh, we found before that was broken off. Uh, it looked like that little ring, remember? So, knock the head out there for you, and that's what he is. A little uh, little spigot tap handle, little water tap handle. So put him on the head, turn him on, turn him off. I see you've lost an arm. I hope it's going to grow back. Ah, it's growing back. Two arms again. Right, as you can see, we uh, we're still plodding along. However, look, I think we're nearly done. Um, I'm still having trouble locating exactly where the school site's at. I do believe it was up over there behind Dominic. Uh, it sort of wouldn't be on this runoff bank. 
because if they had so much water here every year, uh, yearly, you're not going to put a school down the back here somewhere or over that way because uh, this is the highest point up here where my car is sort of is the highest point. So I would have put the school sort of, I would presume the school would be sort of up there sitting in that sort of gully there. Um, probably the old uh, dip where the building would sit down. And look, it was removed, and that building was actually removed uh, to the school site uh, uh, they were at the other week. 30, 40 k's that way. Could you just imagine how they moved it uh, by bullock team and uh, or horse and dray? Pretty amazing. Anyway, I dare say that's where the school site was. We haven't found too much more exciting stuff here. Uh, we're going to pack up now and head home. It's 2.30, so we've been get, giving it a few good hours now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of mates to come out here with me, a uh, few few other detectorists, and we're going to grid this whole site and see what else see what else is uh, here uh, to be found. Because I'm sure it's it's tricky, you know. I'm, I'm sort of making my way through uh, and in between all this sort of stuff, uh, but at the same time, what am I missing? Uh, because I'm missing a lot of ground. You can't just sort of grid. Uh, back and forth because there's too many obstacles in the way so we're gonna do the best we can get a few other people out here and we're all the tech together so let's uh let's get back to the car righto guys we are done as you can see uh, we've got the, the the few finds laid out we did not get very much today uh, we did not dig too many items at all we uh we got that old key there and a few tins few cans few nails uh, nothing too special and then move on to our good finds. So we had these beautiful old keg tap, oh, not keg, I should say, a beautiful old water tap. So very, very cool. It would have been plumbed into a galvanized uh, or a, a, a steel uh, pipe there. So very, very nice. And uh, you know what? I've never seen that, uh, that head on them before. I've never seen that type of uh, opening uh, head on them before. So that's an interesting one. We also had the uh, tap handle, uh, handle if you like <laughs> so he would have went on there and basically turned him on and off uh, but not suitable for this one he's got a different head on him as i said so same thing there uh, got a little tap uh, handle and he's been broken off on the bottom there so and the reason why he would have been discarded i don't know why this one was discarded he's a ripper isn't he dom yep and i love it i love it too so we've got this one here the little um australian uh, lead bale seal pretty cool piece got australia written on it and the first or we'll show you the last actually the last coin the second coin that we got was this one half penny uh, 1917 he was so a little bit worse for wear i did say he came up pretty good and we got a date off him he's not too bad however look at this cracker and this is the first one that we found we've just gave him a rinse off in the water and look at that 1907 uh, one penny Beautiful condition. Did you get scared, did you? The and car went car went past. Another no noisy car. Another noisy car. What do you reckon about this coin? Good. Good? Yeah, it's my favourite too. What a ripper. Absolutely beautiful. You know, for such a wet area, I would have presumed that this would come out uh, a lot worse for wear. But just to rinse off in the puddle, and what a cracker. Anyway, guys, that's about it. Um, we're going to finish up and we're going to head home. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for future. And we will get back out here soon uh, for another hunt. So who knows? I might even uh, look at organising a group hunt and we can all do it together. So how cool would that be? Anyway, see you next time.